Yo, it's been a while since I've gone up to a thrift store and found a true gem, a real gem, but I think I've got one in this video, so I'm excited to feature that and share it with you. We've got a bunch of bread and butter items, a lot of high dollar items, and two bolos that are brand new to me. Wait until you see this first one. Stay tuned. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get at it. And as always, I thank each and every one of you for listening to me ramble about eBay and reselling all day. Love you all, but let's get into the stores, knock the dust off here as we continue to settle ourselves back down from a very long, wonderful vacation. Check this thing out. If you ever find it, grab it. It takes a little bit of testing because it comes with two parts. There's You put four double A's in the bottom and then I think you put two triple A's in the remote that's on the inside. But this is Hasbro Dream Life from 2005. It's just a console game. You plug it into the television. You create a character. You like pick your best friend. It's targeted towards girls. And like the, the goal is to become a superstar. It's a silly game. Very, very old. But it looks like it is popular again. And the comparables, when I ran them, were unbelievable. So I have mine listed for $80. So they had it marked $4.99, very unassuming. It actually looked like somebody had it at a garage sale for two bucks and didn't sell it. So a crazy find, but yeah, keep your eye out for that. I got it home. I had to clean the battery compartment out of the remote a little bit when I was testing it, but the game played perfect. Once we got new batteries in, once the compartment was clean, the bottom four were with the, where the double A's go, that battery compartment was nice and clean. So I just had to like tidy up the remote, but it worked perfect the minute I put the batteries in after cleaning it off for a little bit. And um, it's a bolo. Keep your eye out for it. Good find. The rest of these things here I looked at loosely. I did run comps on the Golden Books they um that bedside whatever that whatever that that spray was and a few of the other things that are on this cart right here the panasonic none of them had any value or enough value for me to pull the trigger on it at the prices they were asking so i left all of that behind but the best thing is walking into a thrift store nailing a banger right off the bat takes the pressure off and we're going to move on to a pair of shoes that I have never sourced before. This is a pair of soft star shoes. This is another bolo that you're going to want to put on your radar. These are the Hawthorne Chucka boots. They're unisex. So they like fit men's and women's. This is an eight wide, which in US is a, an eight and a half uh, and nine size nine. Believe it or not, I have those shoes listed for $100. Another very unassuming bolo on a different cart, but five and a half dollars they will cost me. I think they're $5.29. These shoes used to be $4.99. I don't the sometimes I get my prices mixed up depending on what store I'm shopping in, but let's say five and a half dollars. But yes, I have those listed for a hundred, and the comparables on that brand dictated that uh, my price is correct. So I think brand new, those shoes are 200, but both of those bolos that I just featured are brand new to me. And so hopefully they are new to you as well. I don't see anything else on these carts that look uh, interesting, but um, I don't script any of this. So I'm kind of reliving <laughs> this over again. And I don't remember what the heck was on the rest of this cart. This is a, yeah, none of that stuff has any value. Okay, the next thing here, is Carhartt, generally speaking, is a bolo. You have to check. Some of it's great. Some of it is just very mid. This is a really like high in-demand style of pants. So the style is B01. The color is moss green. I, the tags are kind of messed up here, so I couldn't really pull it off to show you correctly. I think they were like a 34 or a 36. The comparables said list these between 50 and $60, so I think I had them listed, I listed them a little bit higher at 70, and they sold very, very quickly for $55. So that was a fast seller, and when I say fast seller, I'm saying maybe within 24 to 48 hours of me getting them listed. So that style of Carhartt pant, it's B01 and then MOS, if you want the full style and colorway code. 
uh, keep your eye out for them because it looked like they were really good sellers where you see a lot of even brand new with tags Carhartt pants on the market on eBay and you really you can't really get top dollar for a lot of them I see you know t pants selling for fifteen dollars twenty dollars so with Carhartt and we're talking about pants specifically you do have to check that was just um, an, an amazing find they will only cost me four dollars and ninety nine cents and that pants are already sold so all right ladies i'm gonna need your help here i bought this thing i'm like i'm trying i'm trying with the women's clothing this is like a cardigan style zip from free people they call this their mason hoodie it is a woman's size medium it's got like a little waffle knit pattern going on to it i don't know more Brand new solds than I could find pre-owned. Lots in the $80 to $100 range brand new. So I'm going to have to guess a little bit. I'm going to try to get $60 for that. But again, it's not really my wheelhouse. But I think it is a popular enough style just based on even the 90-day total, the Terapeak two-year range. So I'm going to grab it, 5 bucks on to 60 And then we'll move on to a pair of Lululemon Street to Studio Pants. If I've got this correct, I think I do. I was using Google Lens to try to help me identify the exact pant here because there's just so many that look similar. So it was a size six or size six regular. It looks like the size sixes and a lot of the other sizes sell pre-owned for $50 and up. A lot of the time, There's I saw some things that looked like if it was a first release on this pant, you could get a little bit more money. This is just some of the information that I was trying to calculate or derive when I was doing my initial sold comparable research. So I think I can put those on the market for $50. Those will also cost me five and there won't be a ton of competition. So I think not knowing anything else, not having as much experience with that style of Lululemon that I'll just list it at 50. It's not one of those instances where I think I can go higher. I'm going to settle in right there because I haven't been able to determine again. Is, this, is it a first release? Is it something after the fact? Like, do I have the option here to try to get a little bit more money? But I will be happy with 50, uh, especially spending $5. So moved over to the, um, the betting. And I've not had any luck recently with this category. Uh, there's some Joanne fabric that is there but some of the and this is in i have very little expertise kind of in this area but i mean it doesn't take much to just you know pull your phone out and do the research but haven't really gotten lucky in that area so and i didn't see anything there that looked like it had values i'm going to move on here and i got lucky here with a uh lay crusade this is like a utensil crock i think who knew? i didn't i don't think i knew that this was sold at marshall's maybe i didn't i didn't think about it uh and it only cost ten dollars when it was at marshall's well i gotta tell you i'm gonna charge 25 for it and uh I'm just going to turn and look the other way. So I that was, it didn't have a sticker on it, but I think she charged me $4.99 when I got to the register. At any rate, there's a couple of different sizes on those Crocs. Um, there's like a 10-inch one. I think the one that I have was 6 inches, and so $20 to $25, I think, is the range that that will sell in. I'm a brand buyer, um, first and foremost, and I love that brand. So even if it only sells for 20 and I bought it for five, that's still a fantastic return. I'm satisfied with it because I believe that it's just a matter of time. And I've said this before and I'll say it again on that brand uh, for when it sells. So we got anything else here? I thought that was a, that had like a little mushroom pattern on that little uh, syrup pour, uh, whatever that was, but I didn't see any on there. That elephant looked like it was cheap light nothing going on anybody else see anything there i don't see anything so we're going to move on this is for the commenter who uh thinks that i am obsessed with seasonality and only buys things when it's in season i'm grabbing this pair of cool shorts because i'll say it again i'm a brand buyer before anything else now this will be a hard sell this is not a good or a great seller um, when we're talking about velocity, the cool Muva Skort, it's a Skort, I believe, the women's size medium, heathered gray, or just gray as a color. It's going to take me a while. I can't list this for more than $20 just based on the research that I did. So these will also cost $4.99. Going to list them like for $25 and then hopefully catch somebody who gets an offer. So it'll sell between $20 and $25. But the, per the person that made the comment was referring to a pair of Crocs that I was buying and 
I was only buying them because it was they were orange and it's you know still orange season but I don't buy and I'm gonna say this for new buyers I don't buy a ton of youth items and so I think that's where they were uh, that's what drove them to make the comment if they were a long time viewer and long time watcher I think they would know better because it's a it's a youth thing I don't typically buy that type of stuff all right big time bolo alert let's talk about this gnome very very heavy now it weighs about six and a half pounds it has it's cast iron and it's two pieces we're going to take a little bit of a closer look at this at home because if this is a hubbly gnome from the 1910s 1920s 1930s it is insanely valuable i don't know if that's the original paint i think it is it's only going to cost me ten dollars but this little fella here has the potential to be worth a ton of money if it's a specific brand i'm going to share with you what i think i know about that brand when we get home as it stands i think i've got a big time bolo here and even if it isn't the brand and maybe it is a reproduction it still has a lot of value so i'm going to throw this guy in my cart we're going to take a look at the rest of these carts that came out but i was really excited when i started to do the research on that gnome and then you know i'm like where there's smoke there's fire do we have a a family of them laying around i didn't see any but i am going to take that fellow right there we're going to talk about him in just a second and to finish off our shopping excursion we have an xbox game just laying within the vhs Simpsons hit and run. I've sold this case alone before without the game. Disc looks like it's fine. Got some minor scratches on it, but I'll get it home. I have an Xbox system. We'll test it. I'm almost 100% sure that it is going to work. This game cost me $2.99 in this store. I know it was marked 96 cents, but I think that came from probably another store. That's what that writing looked like on there. The media in this store, I think is $2.99. So that's what that game cost me, but I think I can get in between 35 and 40 dollars for that game and that never happens it's hard to find video games lately although they do turn up from time to time here's another good example i didn't look the what is this lego star wars i didn't look that one up and there's harry potter right here as well but um so lazy me if they've got value go uh in your local jump in here and get them but i will take the simpsons game 35 bucks on that and uh let's head home and there's a couple of things i want to show you first we're going to start with the gnome Okay, here's our little fella right here. I'm gonna to try to get him as close to you as possible so that you can take a look at him. Now, there's a couple of things I've learned about whether this is an authentic Hubbly or if it's a reproduction. Unfortunately, when they stopped making these molds, I think they sold the molds and it was possible that another company was making them and so there wouldn't be a maker's mark on them, but the mold would be exactly the same, which is already confusing enough to me but there's a couple of things that we're gonna look for here first. If you've got an original, or you're getting close to an original Hubbly gnome or one of the dogs that they made, one of the things you'll notice is there's screws on the back. There's a screw right here. There's also a screw right here. If it's a flathead, and I think you can see that right there, then you're closer to it being an original. Um, if this was a Phillips head screw on the back, then it would either be a fake completely or a reproduction of some sort. So I've got the ones that are flat on both the head and the body here. And so that's a good indication. The next thing here, it's two pieces of cast iron welded together, right? So you see a seam there and a seam there. What they're saying is if the seams look seamless, for lack of a better way to put it, um, you're closer to having an original. The problem I'm having with this one is the seam on this side looks really clean. See that? But if you flip it over, it looks a little bit rocky on this side. It looks good down here, but like up towards the, the hat, it doesn't. And so that's throwing me off a little bit. The third is maker's mark. If there was a mark on it at all, Hubbly put the mark on the inside somewhere. And so it's really hard to determine without taking it apart um, if it's real or not. There's nothing on the feet. There's no mark on the feet. And I don't see anything. What they say is look for a three digit number. Sometimes they say Hubbly. Sometimes they say the word fish. And fish was a cartoon artist from like the 20s or the 30s. 
And so she did a few of these. You would see that on there. I don't see any words. I don't see anything inscribed. I don't see any three digit numbers anywhere, which is leading me to believe that this is their mold, but a reproduction and not an official Hubbly. So I really, I don't know what to do um, regarding getting it listed. What I am going to do without uh, knowing anything else is I'm going to list this, but I'm going to leave the name Hubbly out of the title, out of the description, out of my item specifics, because if a true collector is out there searching and looking for it, just based on the other keywords that I use, they're going to land on my listing, right? They're going to be able to find it, whether it's got Hubbly in it or not. And technically, and you'll see this on the sold comparables, some people have in their title Hubbly with a question mark because they couldn't confirm it. That's technically not allowed. So if I can't identify it, I don't know for sure, I'm not gonna use the title or the, or the name of that company in my listing anywhere because again, a real collector is gonna know how to find my listing, right? There just aren't that many of them and the rest of the keywords that I use will be good enough. So I don't need Hubbly to help me in search at all um, when it comes to matching this piece with the, um, with the, with the future buyer. So the details on it, it's almost exactly 11 inches tall. It weighs about six and a half pounds. Some Hubblies were like 13, 13 and a half inches. Um, it's very heavy. I believe it's the original paint and I still think I can get 275 for it. So <clears throat> that's what I'm gonna end up listing it at. And um, that's basically what I learned. So hopefully that um, helps you. And if I've got an expert on cast iron or that brand, chime in and let me know because I'm here to learn also. But even as it stands, not being able to identify if it's a true Hubbly or not, I'm still gonna list this bad boy for 275. All right, I spent $43.50 for all of those items. My total listed value, including that gnome, comes to $650. So another good haul, and it's time to go to the gym. Brendan here, Dead Planet, The One Man Show. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you in the next video.